In this video, we're gonna take a look at a magenta ink by Sailor, their Grenade. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description are links to the magenta ink playlist, so if you wanna see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather spread, halo sheen. We do get peppers of shading throughout peppers, peppering of shading all throughout the extra fine. We do get a little bit of shading in the medium, not a whole lot. For the most part, the medium only has a couple lighter spots. In general, we have the same tone throughout this writing. Now, the extra fine took eight seconds to dry and the medium took 14. The scrubby of the extra fine shows more color variation than the medium did, which is what happened in the writing. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Franklin Kristoff Model 66 with a broad sig nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, but there is quite a bit of ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a lighter tone than the stub, and the medium's the same tone as the, the same tone as the stub. The extra fine took 15 seconds to dry, while the medium took 21 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both are showing us no color variation. We're really not getting it in the writing. And the smear test, I do not think you could uh, recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is very interesting because magenta and purple to me come very close. And the bottom of this has a very bright magenta or very bright uh, purple while the top of it has a very dark magenta. And we should see more shading than we're getting in some of this ink. Now the one on the right that's let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water, you see that bright bright purple on the bottom, really starting to form a line and be there, while the dark magenta is still very gathered at the top, giving the idea that the purple tone may be a little bit resistant here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather spread Halo sheen, we have a few spots of shading that are occurring in the extra fine, but nothing in the medium or the stub. The extra fine is lighter than the stub. The extra fine took 10 seconds to dry, the medium took 15. The scrubby shows no color variation, but there is that light peppering of darker spots, which I am enjoying in the, ex in the extra fine. Scrubby, or smear test says you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I wouldn't use it. Most of that really held together very well, but it getting, it's getting very muddy around the lowercase h. I just don't want that in my notes if I had to go back and highlight, but I do think you could safely use it. Water is removing the magenta part of this ink, but not that bright purple. It's very much down there and in place. It is safe to say that it only took water to get it out of my pen. Now, pen flush is doing more than the water did. It is, you see the beginnings of the white of the paper coming through. One third bleach solution did completely remove it from the paper, but also discolored the paper a yellow tone as it did it. The next writing sample is done on G Lalo paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do, even with this gray paper, get spots of shading with the extra fine. Nothing in the medium or in the stub. The extra fine's just a tad bit lighter than the stub, while the medium's the same tone as the stub. Extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium took eight. The scrubby for both give us no color variation, not accounting for that nice seasoning of dark colors in the extra fine. And the smear test, there's no recovering it if you smeared while you were writing. 
For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Sailor's Grenade has a viscosity of 1.46, so this is a wet ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity test and all that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. The next writing sample is done on original crown mill paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade for the stub or for the, or the medium that are both very dark. Lighter tone than both of them is the extra fine. And with that lighter tone does come a little bit of shading. Again, we get that nice seasoning of darker spots throughout this writing. Really like how that looks there. Six seconds to dry for the extra fine, eight for the medium. Scrubby gives us no color variation, but we got it in the extra fine. And the smear test, you couldn't recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor's Grenade has an average dry time of 14 seconds, so it's normal. The last writing sample is done on Limon paper. Not a paper known to be fountain pen friendly, and it generally isn't, but sometimes we find those inks that perform very well on it. We can honestly see that in the extra fine it did pretty well, in the stub it suffered, and in the medium it suffered. For all this suffering, none of it went through and corrupted the page underneath. I don't know about using the back of the page with the medium. Not a problem using the back of the page with the extra fine. We get tiny feathering in the stub. We get no feathering in the extra fine or the medium. We have no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the extra fine or than the medium and the stub. The extra fine took four seconds to dry while the medium took five and the scrubby for both gives no color variation. We didn't get any and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Grenade, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a nice turquoise ink by Diamine, their Aqua Lagoon. If you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Sailor's Grenade? For me, this is a great alternative to red. I like the very dark tones that come through in its seasoning of shading. Strange that I like very red leaning magenta, but don't tend to go for reds. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I have found that the more towards red an ink gets, the less I prefer shading. So I would go with a very wet, fine or broad, because I don't care for mediums. Nice dark tone, probably not getting any shading. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Mont Blanc's Mystery Black.